The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode.
Right. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, my name's uh, Dave Thompson. Um, I'm a supporter for Pandora's Box, and I have my colleague uh, Daniel Kaminsky. Um, he is a Pandora's Box expert and a beta tester, and he will be joining us today to assist me. Hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, with this topic. Hi, Daniel. Welcome. Thank you. Um, right. So um, let's kick off. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about uh, Pandora's Box and multi-channel audio. So what we're going to cover will be broken down as follows. Um, so a brief overview of audio, um, a little bit about digital audio, um, audio formats, um, embedded audio versus separate audio. Um, why ASIO and ASIO tracks? We'll talk a bit about clocks and sound cards, and we will speak a bit about Dante as well. Um, if you feel like asking questions, you're welcome to post questions, and either myself or Daniel will answer them. Um, okay, but uh, let's dive in. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So, uh, what is what is audio? What is sound? Um, sound can be broken down as the uh, movement of uh, molecules in the air, which will then transfer this information to our ears. Um, it can also be represented mathematically and can be described as a wave. Um, most humans, well, pretty much everybody, can hear from about 20 hertz up to 22 kilohertz. Obviously, you, you can feel uh, lower frequencies. Um, and as you age, obviously, your response to those higher frequencies slowly diminish. Um, audio can be defined as a wavelength. <clears throat> And it also has amplitude, so the, the higher your wave is, uh, the louder the sound is, and the shorter the wavelength is, obviously, the higher the frequency becomes. So because, as I said, uh, it's math it uh, can be described as a, a wave, we can also represent it mathematically. So if you look on my screen, um, <clears throat> you can see, excuse me, three representations um, of, of a wave. And if you look at the left um, of the image, you can see a very low um, sample rate uh, file being sampled. And then as we move to the center and then we move to the right, it has a higher sampling rate. So um, the sampling um, of the audio um, allows us to have a look at, at those waveforms. And then um, the bit depth also allows us to get more points to measure those values. So uh, the more, uh, the higher your, your sample rate is and the more bit depth you have, the more accurately we are able to recon reconstruct that waveform once it's been um, passed through the digital interface also. The, once we've captured it, processed it, and then played it back out again, the more, we, the more information we are able to, to analyze the uh, waveform with, the more accurately we can reproduce it on the other side. Um, so audio can essentially be um, transferred in a couple of ways. We can, um, uh, you know, we can capture audio in a compressed manner, or we can capture audio in an uncompressed manner. Um, so here on this slide, you can see just basically a very simple representation of compressed audio versus wave audio. Um, I'll talk a bit more about waves in a moment, but um, <clears throat> essentially, uh, so compressed audio is um, MP3, or uh, a wave file is an uncompressed um, um, source. So it's trying to be as accurate and as re representative of the original source file. So for example, here you can see just the breakdown of, uh, on the left-hand side is the, um, the representation of compressed audio versus uncompressed audio. And uh, this is just an illustration of um, how audio is handled inside of our systems, okay? So if we compare an uncompressed wave file, which is um, 11 times larger than uh, a compressed um, MP3, we can then see um, it being represented here in, in this slide. Um, you can see that uh, for one second of uncompressed full HD video, um, one second of uncompressed audio, so a wave file playing is less than 1% of the total data stream that would be um, moving through uh, your system at, at that point in time. So um, audio is, is very, um, 
where, you know, when you compare audio to video, it's really a small amount of information. And this is why you're able to send audio down an HDMI cable, for example, and, and you, you, you can move your uh, five or six channels down HDMI quite easily without causing um, a lot of problems. So how do we correlate this with Pandora's box? So <clears throat> Pandora's box, we are able to support uh, quite a lot of audio formats. Obviously, we can have uh, PCM wave. PCM stands for uh, pulse code modulation. So that's just the method that it uses to analyze the incoming audio. Um, there's MP3s and M2A, which is uh, MPEG-2 audio. Um, the sample rates, um, again, so 44.1 is just uh, CD uh, quality or CD's uh, sample rate. 48 kilohertz is uh, used for DVD audio and um, broadcast and then obviously you can move up to 96 kilohertz which is the sampling rate that a lot of the digital consoles are working on um, then obviously your bit depth which is handled in pandora's box you can either have 16 or 24 bit um, 16 bit if i rem remember off the top of my head it gives you 65,000 odd uh, sampling points that you can have within a sample um, and if you move to 24 bit depth it's already moving over to 1.6 million uh, points roughly so um, you can get really high quality audio moving through in the in the digital um, environment so um, <clears throat> then how do we handle audio inside of pandora's box um, we can have um, embedded audio and um, you know if you have a project with um, a video file playing on a, a player or on a server um, and the video file has embedded audio that means that on that particular client um, the audio in that file and the video will be played out together on that local machine so um, what that also means that uh, the audio will be routed um, and output through the default window, windows audio device on that particular machine um, <clears throat> and it will use as a direct show to um, sync the audio and the video together so they are played out together as one thing um, so um, another point to note is that in pandora's box uh, mp3 audio can only be played out on a video layer and it uses the direct show um, again here um, <clears throat> as i mentioned and just to re remind you of the point um, the so audio on video layers um, is handled through direct show and is um, routed through Windows Audio. So on that machine, that local client playing that audio on that video layer, that audio and video will be started and it will be in sync on that machine. Um, right, if you want to play max audio, so um, multiple channels in one audio file, that also is supported on video layers um, and uh, it is played back in sync on that machine okay um yeah are there any questions at the stage doesn't look like it okay cool so let's no move problem. on okay thank you so um right the next question is okay i've done you know i've got a simple project but now what happens if i've got um, more systems in a machine i've got multiple channels of audio that need to be played back um, and my project's a lot more complicated. So how do we deal with that? How do we um, reliably play back audio in a show environment or in a project? And um, <clears throat> we do this in Pandora's box by using um, ASIO audio. Um, ASIO stands for um, Audio Stream Input Output. It was developed by Steinberg. Um, and the idea is to bypass the Windows operating system and speak directly to the um, to the audio card. So the application speaks to the audio card, it minimizes the amount of latency. Latency is just delay, um, <clears throat> pardon me, that you would uh, pick up um, in a computer. So if everything was being routed through the Windows system, operating system, you would then pick up a bit of delay. So it bypasses it um, <clears throat> and helps to just uh, improve uh, the timings on, on everything. So, um, Obviously, for this to work properly, you need special hardware. So you need uh, ASIO capable devices and you need to have proper drivers. Um, 
yeah, so the ASIO, um, ASIO is always uh, active. Uh, so even when the, no audio is being played back, those tracks are active and um, are always outputting audio, but they will, if there's nothing on there, they will just essentially be putting out no audio. Okay, so um, ASIO tracks with Pandora's box. <clears throat> Right, so they are um, special stereo audio tracks. They are um, synced to each other and to the video. You can um, play back up to 64 channels of audio. Um, you can even do a bit more, depending again, of course, on the ASIO card itself. Um, the levels are in, in real decibels and they are from uh, minus 96 dBs being muted to um, plus uh, 6 uh, decibels, which is obviously two times unity gain. So um, you can obviously, uh, if you need to, you can obviously increase the output um, that is coming from a particular output or increase the level coming out of an output, sorry. Um, so at, at unity gain, so at, at zero decibels where the where the, the audio tracks are at their default, um, it will play back the audio file at its um, the default it'll play back the audio at the level of what it is saved at in that particular file. Um, <clears throat> right, so um, we also recommend having a master clock set up as a source for syncing. Um, just uh, that obviously improves overall um, syncing. I think Daniel can also jump in here if he has any more points to add to it. But um, so we recommend having a master clock running and we use a, a um, an audio clock because it is a lot more accurate having 48,000 or 96,000 samples per second than having only 60 samples a second of a video output. So if you're using a video clock for an output, you're not really going to get as accurate a sync um, if you compare it to 48,000 possible timings in a second. So that's why um, we set up a, a master clock and the, that audio clock becomes the master um, for all the, the machines essentially. Right, so um, you can also in Pandora's box, you can set up the sound card to be played back from your local machine or your, your manager. So if you have a manager, you can connect your sound card to your manager, or you can use um, a sound card on a client. Um, <clears throat> so that gives you the flexibility to exactly determine how you want to set up your audio in a project. Um, so we give you that um, flexibility. And there can only ever be one master clock in a system. So you can have, uh, yeah, so that all the timing goes back to one point. Okay. Um, also, for example, if you have um, SIMT audio, so if you're using time code coming in and you have a master clock, you can't use both of them. Obviously, then you need to switch to the, um, the SIMT time code coming in as being your, your clock. Um, yeah. So. Um, right, we're going to move on now to um, our next um, slide, which is uh, ASIO audio card settings. Um, what I'm going to do is just, um, sorry, I just want to connect through to the Pandora's box. And let's just see here. Okay, so um, here's our Pandora's box project. Um, we've got, <clears throat> we can see our, our local machine. There's our manager represented as a local. Our server is site two. And we've set up a couple of audio tracks on it. And we've got our, our uh, sequence represented there, right? So now in my project, I need to tell the manager that um, the sound card that we're going to use is on server two, uh, on our site two. So on our, well, it's, sorry, it's labeled here as server one. So we're going to go to the uh, ASIO audio tab inside of the configuration tab. Thank you. And we're going to select server one. And then we're going to select our sound card. So um, there we go. We select the ASIO hammer fall. And then once that is selected, and sorry, and we've set our sample rate, we can then go to the top and say, use the audio clock as master. So when you click on it, it will say ask to run as master. And then once it's locked, it'll confirm that it's running as master. Um, then if we scroll down a little bit, then we can see there, we can set a master value, uh, master volume for our card. Um, by default, it's normally at minus nine decibels. You obviously can increase or decrease it uh, as per your requirements. <clears throat> There we go. 
and um, if you reset it, it will go back to minus nine. So um, then there's also the show channel um, tab. We will we can talk a little bit about this. This literally just shows you um, a breakdown of your selected cards. So I can see here my output channels. I've got 16 channels of audio out, um, and <clears throat> I have uh, 16 channels of audio input. Um, it's literally just a, a representation. You can't actually access those channels from this, um, this drop down. So, okay, so that's the first thing. So we set up we set up our sound card. We did set our um, our sample rate, um, <clears throat> and now we want to start adding some uh, content into our project. So. Um, obviously, we drag our content in from our assets tab. Um, we've already got the setup in our project here. And if I select a file, um, you can also see gives me the duration. Obviously, I have my file name. I've got a little icon to show me that it's an audio file. And I have the sample rate for that audio file. Um, again, what is very important is make sure the sample rate that is shown in your project is what is being played back on your audio card, because if they do not match, you're going to be, ha be having files played back at um, either too fast or too slow, because the, the clock rates don't match. Um, <clears throat> right, thank you. Um, so um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the uh, device tree. So what are we seeing in the device tree? Um, in the new uh, uh, 6.4 version, we can see um, all of our, our, obviously our devices in our, our server. And we also have um, the tracks now showing a, um, a mute and unmute icon. So the same as when a layer is being rendered or not rendered, um, you can also show here that uh, my audio track is um, set to playback audio and is not muted. Okay, that again you can set in the inspector as well. So you can mute the audio from the inspector and you can also do it from device viewer. So if you um, click on your device viewer and uh, as you mute and unmute you can actually see that it updates in all three positions so they're all linked to each other and each the, the, they have um, what's the word cross functionality so if you click one you click all of them okay so um, <clears throat> while we're talking about actually um, let's just go back to the device viewer quickly we can just show the, the, um, the functionality in the device obviously you can set the volume um, it will show in the media, it will show the, the track name if you have um, a, a file dragged in there. There we go. Um, you can set an in point and an out point in that uh, particular file. And again, um, on the end, um, you can set up uh, your panning, so left and right. If Obviously, if it's in the center, it will then output to both channels, but we'll come to that a bit more um, later. Again, you can play, pause, and set... Uh, loop um, commands. Okay, so, um, all right, so now that's the functionality of the device viewer. Um, let's, um, we can have a look at, uh, we can have a look at our sequence. So now <clears throat> in Pandora's box, once you've dragged your um, video with embedded audio or whether you drag in an audio file into your project, Pandora's box will quickly go and analyze that file and it will create a um, a, a wave, some waveform information. It'll create waveform data. And that is um, then shown in your track layer as a physical representation of your audio files. Um, <clears throat> you can also, um, you'll see as we change that, um, that you can see the waveforms being represented there. So um, as you change um, your, um, sorry, if you, if you, so if you, for example, <laughs> I have to gather my thoughts. Um, if you are um, updating, um, if you need to chop a video, for example, and you're trying to cut something to a beat for a customer, you can then use your, your waveform as a physical representation of what's happening inside of your audio file. Um, yeah. Okay. Then, um, you can also change the way that your uh, sound file is represented. So you can set it to um, a standard waveform or a rectified waveform. Um, 
the standard waveform obviously just has your your positive and negative values set uh, to obviously your center um, representation or they they justified to the center point if they are rectified then everything is just um, sort of if you were to take the whole sound file and drop it onto a table all of those points would set up to a zero position uh, I think that's probably the easiest for, way for me to try and explain that. Um, so that's uh, what's happening in the in the rectified waveform. Um, then uh, we have our device viewer, which then allows us to see what is happening on um, our particular clients. So you can use your drop down, and you can look at different um, <clears throat> different clients in a project, and you can see, okay, here I am. I'm looking at uh, server one. And I want to see what is being played back on that particular um, on that particular uh, server. So you can see here, there's my wave uh, wave file playing back. Um, <clears throat> it uh, is showing me a couple of things that I can quite uh, easily and quickly see there, and that is um, I can see my um, sorry one second. I can see my my site. I can see my um, the, the, the duration of my resource, so I can see how long my sound file is. I can see the name of the file, and I can also see the volume. So if I have any keys programmed in there, um, as I play back, you will see those values um, changing. Um, also, what you'll also notice is I have two little meters showing my audio. So you see, as the, the now pointer is, or as the sequence is playing, the audio is fading out, that's coming out of the output. But my meters are still moving um, as they should be. Okay, that's maybe a bad part of the file. Um, but you'll see now, uh, there we go. So um, the audio is playing back. Uh, what's being represented in your meters um, is uh, pre-fade listen. So it's a PFL level. Um, and that is the same as an audio console. So if you had your headphones on, you could listen to what is being coming from a particular channel without it um, going out through the PA system. The same thing applies here in Pandora's box. You can um, see that represented in your in your device viewer. Um, again, hey, we have yeah, one oh, question here. Yes. Uh, that's a question if we can see the waveform bigger. Is it possible to sign the waveform window in a to sign the waveform window in the next version? Right now we cannot see the waveform bigger. This is the uh, only size we can see the waveform. We can zoom in. Uh, but we cannot see it bigger. We cannot make it higher. I hope yeah. this answers the question. Cool. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for that question. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, uh, now let me just catch up to my thought again. Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, as you can see in our sequence, um, we've got some keys. Um, we've got some keys stored in there. So, the same as a video layer, you can store volume keys inside of um, your project. Um, you can obviously <clears throat> change your curve type and you can access that inside of your inspector as well. So you can change it to have a nice fade. Um, you can change to Bezier, Bezier corner, etc. So the same as you do in a video um, channel, you have the same um, functionality with the audio keys as well. Okay, so yeah, look at that. There we go. So, right, we can set that up. Um, now, if we look in the next part of our project, here we can see, so here's some multi-track multi, multi -track, um, audio being played back. And we've got our, is that one, two, three, four, or five? We've got our five layers being played back. Um, we've got separated audio, so we can see bass, drums, guitar, guitar, and lead electric guitar. Um, you can see all of the channels are coming out. I, can, I know that I'm getting audio out of all of, my, all of my channels. So another nice thing about having the audio being shown directly in the device viewer is um, you can very, well, you can just instantly by looking at your GUI, you can see, okay, my audio is playing back. Everything's coming out from me as it should be, um, but maybe the uh, audio engineer is fast asleep and hasn't opened the channels. So, um, if uh, yeah, if you're not hearing audio coming out, you know that your files are playing back as they should be. So just check um, the audio guy to make sure that he hasn't muted any of your channels. Um, right. So we've got our multi-track playing, but if we were, for example, to we wanted to route those um, audio tracks to different outputs. Um, we could then 
so for example we have track one track two track three track four etc etc and we can then go into each individual track and we can assign where we want those where we want to route those out of our sound card um, at when so if you cast your mind back when we were setting up our channels um, or when we were setting up our audio card we could then go and have a look at our audio channels um, the channels that are represented there, so 1 to 16, um, corresponds to the physical outputs on your audio card. And uh, when you want to route your audio tracks or your audio layers to different outputs, you would then do that in the um, track inspector in, uh, the, in uh, Pandora's box. So um, we want to send... Um, what are we on? So we're, for example, on our guitar one, and we want to send that uh, out of, um, uh, let's send it out of channel one and two. So we can assign um, channel one and channel two, and then that will automatically be routed on the sound card itself, and it'll come out of the corresponding channels. Um, obviously, that is stereo, so you would need to assign uh, channel one to left and channel two to right. If you wanted to mute a particular output, you could just assign zero into that um, left or right for that particular channel. Um, and also, um, it's a good point to note that you can't uh, have the same output routed to left and right. So I can set up three in the left channel, but I can't set up three in the right channel. So it needs to be a unique um, output. Then uh, if you wanted to send only uh, one channel out of a particular card, you can then also, uh, out of a particular output, my apologies, um, you could also then use the panning to shift everything out of um, channel one for track three, for example. So you could then go into your device viewer and then do a pan and um, set up it, uh, set up your output precisely as you would, um, as you would like to. Um, yeah, are there any questions about that? Was I too fast? Questions? No question at this point. No question. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Daniel. So I think um, we can now jump into talking about um, some audio cards. Um, Daniel, do we need to cover anything else in Pandora's box at the moment? Yes, we do. Uh, there's stop my video. We also have the possibility to add delay to uh, either audio tracks. So uh, down here, we can add up to three seconds delay in our system. Uh, the first thing is if we have an audio that comes in and for some reason is not in sync with uh, the other audios or something else, we can add a delay here. So every time we use the audio, now we have 100 milliseconds of delay on that audio file. So, and it will just play out 100 milliseconds later. Or and this goes up to one second, so 1,000 milliseconds. If we enter like, try to enter three seconds, it will go back to 1,000, so one second. There's another place where we can add delay, and that is the uh, track itself. So for some reason, let's say our analog output is slower than our other outputs. Then we can say, okay, our analog outputs one and two. And on this track, we need a constant delay of, let's say, 60 milliseconds. So everything that's on this track now is delayed by 60 milliseconds. And we can also add delay to a particular uh, container. So let's say only this container at this point in time needs like 300 milliseconds of delay. I don't know why, but like there might be the reason for that. that so one particular container needs to be delayed. So, and all these delay add up on. So if I have the file here, it has already like, let's say uh, 500 milliseconds of delay and my container has uh, 300 milliseconds. So it will be delayed a total by 800 milliseconds. So all these delays stack up. So if you ever run the problem and add delay somewhere, make sure you add it in the right place. If you want it on the whole track, if you only want it on the container, or if you want it on the file, and every time you use the file, there's a delay. So that's something pretty cool, and maybe important to uh, think of. Nice. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, back to you. 
Yeah, so now I'm now going to take over the presenting. Okay, so. Um, right, so let's talk a little bit about sound cards. <clears throat> um, so we ship our sound cards with, um, oh, sorry, we ship our hardware with RME sound cards in them um, because we obviously try and find the best hardware wherever possible that goes into our machines. So that's why we ship RME. Um, they have very, they have brilliant cards. They have excellent uh, drivers. Um, we also uh, recommend Dante. And um, <clears throat> we also have some customers that would sometimes use uh, ASIO for all, um, which is okay. Um, you can use it for pre-programming, but not for showing environments because it is not a physical card. So it is not a hardware card. Uh, so it doesn't have its own clock. Um, <clears throat> so it's, uh, you know, ASIO for all just generates its own thing and it's it's okay for, for pre-programming. Um, don't use it in a show environment. Um, the, ultimately, I think the best thing that, that, you know, what defines a good audio card is having one that um, has a stable clock and has um, a, a brilliant driver. So a reliable driver um, is, is critical. Um, so um, Pandora's box also um, uh, connects with, with Dante. Uh, we recommend, um, Dante, so you can use uh, Dante PCIe and USB 3 sound cards. Um, the, they from um, Focusrite, Yamaha, and RME. Um, you can also use uh, Dante virtual sound card. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, again, there there's no secondary. Um, uh, um, Sorry, it's so no secondary network output. Um, so if you have a if you have an, a network fallover, then obviously you you could have some some issues. Um, and if you are going to use a Dante Virtual Sound Card, um, please make sure that um, you assign it to go out of its own network card or on its its own adapter and over its own network. So um, you know wherever possible, separate your audio network from your Pandora's box um, network. Um, yeah, any questions um, about Dante? No, okay, cool. All right, uh, let's move on. So um, <clears throat> in Pandora's box, we can um, also, um, we can also uh, use audio inputs inside of Pandora's box. Um, the, this must be done on the machine that has the outputs attached to it. So if you're going to capture audio somewhere, it needs to be captured on the machine where it's going to be outputted. Um, obviously, because Pandora's box operates over a network, um, you can't now then go and stream that audio over the same network. Um, that's not that's not how it's, it's supposed to be done. Um, if you want to capture audio, for example, you could put um, audio in, you could get uh, SDI audio injectors and then receive SDI in, and then you can go and uh, grab the um, audio streams from the SDI. So now let's go back to Pandora's box and let's dive in there so we can have a look see okay so now we're going to input um some audio into into uh pandora's box so we're going to input audio um so here i've got uh, my inputs dragged in from my server <clears throat> from my live inputs folder in my assets tree i have um so there we go there's my live inputs uh there's my sdi card coming in and we're going to capture um the you can also grab it in directly from the card itself. And we've dragged them into our project and we can see the different channels. So they're all represented there. Um, tells me the sampling rate in the inspector, which obviously is important. And that's that sample rate has been set by the card itself. Um, you can obviously drag that and then apply it to a track layer and then use that, um, use that resource inside of your project. Um, there we go. There's our input. Um, obviously, it's not going to generate a waveform because it's not a, a, a file itself. It's a stream, so you can't represent a audio stream in that uh, situation. Um, then if you want to use um, 
excuse me, if you want to use um, uh, an embedded stream in an SDI feed, then you can um, go and drag your uh, um, your sorry your channels for your audio um, onto a. You can go. I'm sorry, let me rephrase it. <laughs> you can uh, you can grab your audio your audio channel from that SDR stream and you can apply it to a track layer. Um, but in order to activate the processing for that, you need to go and take the SDI itself and then put the SDI input onto a video layer. Um, it does not need to be shown on screen. So the SDI can be just on the track um, on your sequence, um, but it doesn't need to be shown on an output anyway, so you can actually move it off of your outputs. Um, but as long, but if you want to use the, um, the audio input, the video needs to be activated and needs to be processed. Okay. Um, There's a couple of questions. Okay. Here. Yep. Uh, yep. Number one questions. Uh, version 6.4 supports NDI audio inputs. Um, the answer will be at this point not as I'm not sure is the answer. Uh, I'm not sure if the uh, the NDI capture driver supports audio as well. I would have to check on that. Um, but there's no native NDI support yet that is uh, planned for a later version of Pandora's box. And with NDI capture support, we'll also have MDI audio capture support when that comes. And then there's a second question, audio from embedded from HDMI are managed in Pandora's box. Uh, let's check, we have an HDMI card here. Um, no, there's no audio support for HDMI. The problem with that is that uh, the audio in HDMI can be very many different things, and it's uh, so it can't be uh, extracted. So there's no capture of HDMI at this point. Also, can I put the HDMI stream on a graphics layer in order? Yes, you can. You don't need to have to use a video layer, you can put it on a graphics layer. Good question, Janina. Cool. Okay. Um, right, so that should cover inputs. Um, okay, so let's move on. Um, I'm just going to go back into the PowerPoint again. One second, please. Okay. So um, let's, uh, that's kind of uh, sums up where we are at the moment in our project, um, or, or, or this kind of covers audio in Pandora's box. Um, let's go on to some tips and tricks, which will help you as an operator. Um, there we go. Um, so one thing that you may have heard um, in Pandora's box, um, if you have, um, well, you, you may end up with a situation where you might be hearing, um, the beginning of your audio at the end of a tr of a video file or at the end of a track. So um, your file, your video plays, comes to the end, and then you hear a little blip, or you hear, um, you know, just the first few samples of your audio being played right at the end of the track. And what is actually happening is um, because video is obviously, you know, uh, 30 or 60 frames per second. Um, you can have obviously more samples sitting inside of your audio. So your video is at 60 samples a second, but your audio track is at 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, for example. Um, this does mean that you can have, so this for this example, it's at 48 kilohertz, and uh, that would give us 800 samples in a 60 second video frame. Um, as you can see here, our audio track is ending um, 200 samples past the end of our video. But because our, um, looping is on, it then goes and plays 600 samples from the beginning of our um, of our audio file. So the way to make sure that this doesn't happen um, is to switch off your um, loop on your um, video and audio container for that particular file. Um, so this will stop it, uh, um, the, the render engine from going back and looping the audio up and, you know, to make sure it is the same length as the video file. Um, then um, if we move on, so um, in summing up, pretty much, you know, you can use um, 
uh, multi-channel to your advantage. Um, what uh, I used to do when I was an operator is um, I would ask the, the audio guy or the content creator to give us the audio files in three separate components. So I'd always ask for a music bed, a voiceover channel, and then an effects channel. Um, this way, your audio engineer can mix uh, the audio for uh, the venue that you're in and not have an audio engineer sitting behind, um, you know, in a treated room mixing on a pair of monitors. Um, it's better to have three separate three separate tracks and let the audio engineer mix for the venue because then he'll be your best buddy. Um, again, um, using multiple um, multiple outputs. You can also set up uh, Pandora's box to play your SIMT out, your SIMT audio files out of your sound card so that other devices can um, can sync to you. Then um, there is a website, so LTC, uh, you, uh, it's a it's a website where you can go and generate um, generate time codes specific to your needs. Um, there, you are more than welcome to make a donation to the guy because he's put up quite a cool service. Um, so there's a little tip and a, and a trick for you. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, uh, we'll be around here for a couple of minutes. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, I've put up our support email address. Um, if you have any more questions, you're welcome to, to drop us a mail and we'll gladly help you out. And uh, yeah, Daniel, any more questions come in? No, not so far. That's a fun. Thank you very much, Yeah, thank you, uh, Daniel. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Um, keep following our channels for uh, updates on on further webinars, and uh, yeah, we'll be around for a couple of minutes in case you have any more questions. Thank you.